to welcome you to the Griffin Spalding County Board of Education special called meeting uh, on the 28th of July at five o'clock. And uh, we had set this meeting so that we could uh, begin this process of a superintendent search. Last Tuesday, we are announced the retirement of, uh, of Mr. Smith coming up in November. And so we're excited to have with us tonight, Mr. Sam King from GSBA. Um, everyone that is on the uh, call, if you will keep yourselves muted, um, unless you do, it is time to talk. And board members, if you'll do your best to kind of raise your hand when you have those questions so that I can recognize you, uh, that will help also from talking over one another and, and those kind of things. Uh, I do want to take just a second on the very front end of this before we have our uh, prayer and pledge to apologize to uh, my fellow board members. And the reason for my apology is we have put in place a set of norms and protocols where uh, when someone emails all of the board that the uh, board chair is the one that responds to that. And I have been doing that, but I haven't been saying in my email that I am responding for the entire board. So I received a response the other day from a constituent that just said, you're the only one that responded to me. So I think it was very important that the general public realize that those norms and protocols are in place to be able to handle those type of things. So if someone emails all of the board only, then you're gonna get a reply from myself. And I'm also then gonna um, CC Mr. Smith into that email so that uh, he would be aware of that. If you email all of us and Mr. Smith, then you will get a response from Mr. Smith and not all of the board members. So um, if you email, board members individually. I'm sure you probably have gotten a response from them. They will handle that accordingly, but I just think it was important for me to make sure that I said that because I saw that response that said no one else had replied. And uh, those board norms and protocols, you know, the code of ethics, all of our, um, all of our uh, uh, processes that we have are on the website. So if you wanna go and look at those so that you have those, you can, you look under the Board of Education and then look under the board policies. Um, reading those board policies will you know, for sure help you with insomnia, but uh, it has a lot of good information because that is what we have to hold our system accountable to as a, as a board. So I just, again, I, I wanted to apologize to you guys um, for not having acknowledged that on those emails and the email i still have a few more to email to, that i need to respond to and so i will be uh responding in that way so that they know that it is coming from all of them um i also know that the uh the general public when they saw that there was another meeting thought that they were going to have an opportunity to have public comments tonight or wanted to have public comments uh we are uh, we had already set this up to where it wasn't this is an informational meeting for our, our community as we are learning the processes and the timelines of what the superintendent search is going to look like um, and so as we're moving forward with that there will be we have do have another meeting next next tuesday august 4th at six o'clock uh, we will be meeting uh in person at the central office um and so there will be opportunity at that time for public comments and uh I'm sure an item on the agenda will be updating uh, on the school reopening and, and what's taking place with all of that. So just wanted the, uh, the general public to be aware of that. Uh, so if you're good, I am going to open us up with a word of prayer and then uh, Miss Sue is going to lead us in our pledge and then we will continue. So let us pray. Lord God, I just thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for Griffin Spalding County, Lord, our system, our people, our parents, our teachers, our administrators. But we ask you, Father Lord, to continue to put a hedge of protection around each and every person. Look, those that are that are sick and not feeling well, we ask you, Lord, to touch them, allow them to feel better. Lord, we pray for your continued wisdom and direction and guidance as we are moving forward, Father Lord, with doing what we can do for, as the very best for, uh, for our students and the safety and the well-being of teachers. And I thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ms. Sue? Can I unmute? I pledge allegiance to the flag 
of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for that. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, board members, before we uh, go to the adoption of the agenda, we do have one correction for sure that we need to make. We are going to table the appointment of the Executive Director of Communications and Partnerships, uh, and we will move that until actually to tomorrow evening at 530. There will be a public meeting. We have an executive session that will be at 330. Um, but we will, again, that will just be dealing with that one particular item and not doing public comments and those type of things. But I uh, wanted to make sure we have that so you can eliminate that from the agenda tonight. And with that correction, I would entertain a motion for the adoption of the agenda. So moved. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by raising your hand. All right, and oh, there's Mr. Zach. I couldn't see him for on my screen for just a second. I got it. All right, um, that'll move us then to our consent agenda. Uh, I would entertain a motion for our consent agenda. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. I have a second. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. All right, that'll be 5 0. All right, so Dr. King, that brings us to you. Um, thank you so much for being with us this evening. Uh, we have done some great work with uh, GSBA on, on lots of different things, the conferences that we have attended, uh, the things that you provide, or our membership provides the opportunity of learning. And um, so we're very grateful for that. We're also uh, entertaining the idea of um, working with you on our uh, superintendent search, a national superintendent search. And so uh, we invite you to uh, take over and lead us in what that process is going to look like and what maybe a timeline of, of how that's going to work. Okay, thank you, um, Chairman Doss, members of the board, Superintendent Smith and guests. Um, it'll be our intent uh, this afternoon, this evening to walk through the process um, so that uh, we can have an informed conversation about um, what the superintendent search does entail, um, because it is likely the most important work that a board will do um, during its time. Um, I do believe that as far as being able to share the screen, that um, Mr. Harper has access to some supporting slides. And I'll pause for a moment now to see if those could be brought up. Looks like it's working. That's a good sign. OK, um, we'll move forward here. Um, we talked, of course, clearly we want to talk about um, what the Georgia School Boards Association superintendent process as far as the search entails. So I will move on to the, uh, the next slide and uh, move through those photos and we'll move directly to the first frame that pinpoints um, the setup, which is here. And here's where I want the board to begin to think uh, as far as steps, because this process is multifaceted. Uh, the process for the Georgia School Boards Association superintendent search is aligned with uh, national research and best practices around um, educational leadership. And you'll see some of that surface throughout um, what I mentioned to you uh, tonight. What you see on the screen, I won't read to you, but I want to, I mentioned already about the importance of what you are embarking upon. Um, you know that you have domain requirements as far as what boards do. And it's just flashed on the screen here. So for anyone that has not been a part of a superintendent search process uh, from GSBA, it is a, it's, a, it's a team that is involved in this because of all of the moving parts and uh, various departments that are involved in it. But you see here that it's, it's really related to domain six, which is personnel and standard A, element one. 
And so for your reading pleasure, if you decide you want to go back and take a look at what that says about your work, you can. Know that what you see on the screen as far as domain six, standard A and element one was not created by Sam King or created by Georgia School Boards Association, but it is a requirement and an expectation for best practice around the work that you do as a board. And so you see where it says that you hire the superintendent who is to act as the chief executive officer of the school system. And you notice that in that next bullet, when it speaks to element one, element one is taken in, taken from state board information that speaks to the hiring process that you are to work in a way as a board that allows you to customize your process to ensure that you are um, reaching and seeking candidates that have verified knowledge and skills, expertise, licensure, all of the above to meet the needs of moving your strategic plan forward, simply put. So I will move forward from here. So as you think about this and you consider what the advantages are for Georgia School Boards Association to support this work, of course, GSBA is your member of association of 180 elected school boards across the state of Georgia, and 100% of those boards are members of Georgia School Boards Association. But as important, um, a search that's done by Georgia School Boards Association reaches beyond locally, regionally, and beyond um, um, the regional area as far as being a national outreach because um, we are connected with the database of other associations, including uh, other associations across the US, uh, school boards associations uh, statewide throughout the nation, as well as collaboration with the National School Boards Association, as well as AASA, the National Superintendents Organization, not to mention the local connection with all of the districts here, as well as um, um, how you're learning, how you ed, all of the above. So the scope of a search that's done by Georgia School Boards Association instantly reaches all of those um, areas and avenues. And um, GSBA has done over well over 300 plus um, superintendent searches over years spanning from the 1990s going forward. Uh, I also um, have provided for you a historical list of what those are, and I won't shift gears from that now because I want to stay focused on the slides that are here. Probably um, a little bit later throughout this, I can flash those on the screen so that you can see some of the uh, searches that were uh, done by Georgia School Boards Association, as we mentioned, over, over 300. I mentioned the scope of it and the outreach, so I'm going to move on now to, to further uh, emphasize that. I mentioned the, the partnership with National School Boards Association. That's important because of all of the um, highly qualified candidates that are a part of a, a database that are out there, again, locally, uh, internally, um, also within our area, metro area, beyond metro, throughout the state of Georgia, and throughout the nation as far as that database. The second bullet is what I would like to draw um, closer attention to because this is something that separates the GSBA search process from any other entity that you might have to get immersed in a search for a, for a district in Georgia. Because as the association, we are members of the National Affiliation of Superintendent Searches. That's important because just as you move on with professional learning and professional development, being a member of NAS, National Affiliate of Superintendent Searches, is a requirement that our process reflects all of those things that I just mentioned earlier. The best research out there, the best research that focuses on uh, standards. And I'm gonna show you what those standards look like here shortly, but I wanted this to kind of gel for you so you can make sense of what the moving parts are and the method and the madness behind those steps that are involved in the process. But again, NAS, NSBA, AASA, all of that research comes together for this process. So I'll move on to the next piece. I alluded to many of these it's as far as the state and the national advertising goes without saying that once we launch the search of uh, everything is virtual now, of course, even before all of the challenges with COVID-19, uh, national searches had, had gone virtual anyway. So that didn't change anything as far as the work that uh, a GSBA search process uh, entails. 
And I mentioned all of the connection across 40 plus states and uh, multiple consultants across national, beyond Georgia and the AASA connection. So I'll move forward from there. Now I want to talk about those standards and I'm going to uh, pinpoint those um, for you. We'll, when we do this, we align the process with um, what was referred to as the ISLIC standards, leadership competency framework is aligned with the national research, which, called, which is called the Interstate Consortium for um, Educational Leadership, as well as PCEL, which would be the professional standards for educational leaders. And you're gonna see some of those here shortly, but we, we work to support your work to customize the process as far as getting the information out instantly, as far as establishing the timeline for you. I will say to you that rule of thumb, um, it can vary, but rule of thumb, you're looking at three months, a three month process from pressing go and to the point of being ready to announce a finalist. Know that it could take longer or it could be condensed based on decision-making and that kind of thing. But basically, when you think about timeline, we'll customize that timeline for you, but you need to really think about it being by rule of thumb about a three month process, give or take um, some weeks or days there. So I'll move on from here. If you look at those three bullets, um, as far as the announcement, I mentioned the uh, customized announcement process. We build the virtual announcement for you. However, we don't dictate that or micromanagement that micromanage that for you as we move forward because you will complete a questionnaire and a survey. That questionnaire and survey, they all, they are, those items are all aligned with the um, standards and indicators that I'm gonna mention to you in a, in a few minutes. Uh, for example, if you move forward with GSBA supporting your efforts, when you receive that questionnaire and that survey as a board, and that's for the board, we'll talk about community shortly, but once you receive that survey, it's going to ask you pointed questions around all of those indicators. For example, teaching and learning, um, operations, um, as well as the legal aspects, as well as licensure, uh, as well as community connections and stakeholders. Uh, what are the implications for leading for equity and um, cultural responsiveness? All of those things are embedded. You respond to that, and once you respond to those um, items, we receive it back in the GSBA department, and a quick analysis is done of that for you and sent back to you. And so once that analysis is done, that analysis is, you, is used to build your customized profile because the way you answer those questions will then uh, result in a profile for what you are saying in Griffin that you want in Griffin Spalding for your next superintendent. Uh, I'm, I'm spending time on that because I want you to see the uh, laser-like focus on that in terms of you as a board being in the driver's seat in terms of building that profile because the way you answer those questions around those indicators should reflect the needs that you have there locally in terms of building that. And so we use that information that you will have developed and build a draft announcement based on what you say in reference to those responses. Once we build that draft announcement, we send that back to you. As a board, you would take a look at it, tweak it, make changes, knowing that everything that you're looking at reflects what you said in the aggregate and uh but you do another review uh adjust and and uh, determine the look and feel that you want for that announcement of course we will work with um your rep your identified designees in your district to give us information around this announcement in terms of customizing it for example you know how many certified staff do you have how many classified staff how many students etc and what are the great attributes of your district that you want um, highly qualified candidates to know and realize? What are your values and, and your mission and vision going forward? All of those things are reflected in your announcement. You notice here, you see where it says, accept, GSB accepts your online applicants and responds to inquiries in uh, efficient and confidential manner. Uh, that's very important because superintendent search can become a very litigious process. And there are many, many moving parts and pieces to it. Um, the process that GSBA implements 
is one that is vetted and approved through Harbin Heartland Hawkins because they are the general counsel for Georgia School Boards Association. So know that everything that we roll out in this process reflects all of the legal aspects of uh, the search. And you'll see some of those things later when in terms of like how many finalists can you announce? When can you do it? How many uh, days you wait after announcing a finalist to have your final meeting? All those things are moving parts from a legal standpoint that must be clearly and transparently reflected throughout the process. Uh, so once we uh, establish that announcement that you have developed in terms of your profile for your next CEO, we press go and it is automatically out there and available for all of those candidates across the nation as i alluded to earlier as well as within georgia and locally once that happens they are able to take a look at your announcement they are also able to uh, click the link and go directly to the application first they read the announcement and the profile to determine if they can see themselves in your profile if indeed they can and they do they decide to um, respond to that application and answer those que answer questions that are in the application. Uh, something that you need to realize as I move to the next piece is that when they answer questions that are within your application, those questions are also customized based on what you said you are looking for in your next leader and aligned with those standards and indicators that I mentioned earlier. So as you eyeball what's on the screen here, I've touched on many of those. But that first one in terms of a rubric aligned with district criteria, that's simply those uh, research-based indicators that I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Um, also, we, uh, we would take a look at, as you see in that second piece, uh, evaluate the applicants utilizing local board established criteria. That's your criteria based on the profile that you will have established. And external committee of GSBA educational professionals will review as well. Once that happens, that rubric that's used to analyze the applications, complete applications, um, will be used to determine who meets the majority of those indicators for your profile. All of the completed application packets come forward to you. Uh, we don't owe applications, they're all yours, they come forward to you electronically, but you will see what percent of those seemingly meet the vast majority of your profile in a tier one, Tier two, which ones meet um, a moderate amount? Tier three, which ones are below level in terms of seemingly meeting your requirements? So they are tiered um, in terms of that. So those that meet 100% of your profile based on their responses, those that are in tier one, tier two, those that um, reflect the majority, and then tier three, uh, average responses, and then below. So you'll get all of those. But again, you're in the driver's seat as you do a review on those application packets and the candidates. And so from there, you'll determine who you want to interview. So if you see the third bullet here, it says uh, independent review and rating of applications based on evidence-based match to the district criteria, that's your criteria. And once we present those to you, you'll see uh, which ones are in tier one, tier two, tier three, et cetera. And you determine from all of those applications which ones you decide you want to interview. So I'll move forward to the next step. So a part of this is also, like I said, is multifaceted, various departments are involved. And when there's a review, there's a committee review before we give those back to you in terms of tiering, all those things happen. There's a deep dive as far as the reference check. Uh, part of that reference check is a social media check as well. Uh, of course, that's uh, uh, for clear reasons. And, uh, our days and times right now. Um, once that happens, the tiering reflects that as well. So in addition to the references that the completed applicants provide, um, the HR facet of GSBA does a deeper dive with uh, other references as well. Um, in addition to social media check and social media footprint, and to give you a report and update on those applicants based on the extensive references, as well as based on the social media checks. And all of that's reflected in the tiering that comes back to you. I'll move on to the next piece now. All right, so I mentioned a couple of times the interview and the interview process. Let's just say you received 30 completed applications. I don't know how many you, you might end up receiving, but let's just assume that you have 30. 
If you have 30 completed applications, you will receive 100% uh, of those and you'll know which ones seemingly fall in tier one, which ones fall in tier two, tier three, et cetera. All of that information is confidential and of course for you. Um, any work with this is done in executive session, of course, because now you're getting into individuals and personnel matters. Um, today, for the purposes of what we're doing this evening, um, this is a transparent public um, opportunity to hear the process as well. So this is not an executive session piece because it's about the process today. Uh, but here, when you're at the point of review of candidates, that is executive session when you come together, um, you review those candidates and you jointly as a board determine uh, which ones are going to come forward for an interview. Uh, that's your prerogative in terms of that decision making. You determine the number, you determine the schedule, once you determine that, you notify uh, the association. The association notifies the candidates and the association will schedule, will build a draft schedule for interviews for you um, and provide that to you and you as a board, you approve. You choose your days, you choose your location, you choose whether your interviews are virtual um, on the first round or whether they're face-to-face -face, or you're in the driver's seat in reference to that. Uh, we do work with boards to be ready for that. So as far as training for the interview process and readiness for a virtual interview or readiness for and readiness for face-to-face -face interviews, we work with you to be ready for that as well. Um, the other piece, once you determine who's you go who you're going to interview in the first round, um, will consist of your questions. Again, everything is aligned. Those questions that you're going to pinpoint will be aligned with what you say you're looking for in your profile for superintendent. Those indicators, I'm going to mention those to you in a minute, but those questions are going to be aligned with those indicators. As a board, you will determine what those questions are. We do provide um, an item bank of questions within each category of indicators. Um, that's just to help move your work along. Once you take a look at that item bank across all of those indicators, then you tweak those questions or you modify them in any way that you need to or you add to. Uh, and so those questions are your questions and your board as a whole will agree on those questions that are asked. But again, um, we will prepare you for that and you'll see those examples as we move forward. We will um, establish that schedule also based on uh, the will of the board in terms of what days they want to interview across how many days and how many candidates. So we'll move on from there. Next slide. All right, so more about the interviews. and. Usual situations, uh, minus COVID-19, let's just say. Typically, this conversation was more about um, your first uh, interview. In many cases now, boards are considering doing virtual interviews in the first round. Uh, that's your prerogative. Uh, if you decide to do that, we will equip the board to be ready for that and also equip candidates. So part of what we do is training for the readiness of the candidates to be able to come before you in terms of virtual and also for you and being ready to ask those questions from a virtual standpoint. If you decide to go with face-to-face um, -face in your first round, um, depending on when that is, of course you have implications for the physical distancing and all the other things that come into play, but those are some decisions that you're going to have to make and consider as a board. But typically we will be urging you to um, consider your on-site interviews, but choose a neutral location. Um, you, and under usual uh, conditions, we'll be choosing a neutral location outside of your board office uh, for confidentiality purposes for your candidates. Um, again, we're in different times now, so that changes the narrative of this a bit. Once you complete that first round of interviews, you will have interviewed X number of candidates based on the ones that you might have whittled down in terms of uh, um, intriguing your thinking and that they have earned the right to come before you to have conversation with you. Once you have that first round, then you're going to come together. And those, and by the way, those uh, interviews are in executive session as well. Those are, those are, those are not public uh, meetings. Those are executive session discussions that you have uh, with the board face, with the candidates rather face to face or virtually in executive session. Once you do that, once you complete that first round, you have some decisions that you need to make as a board in terms of your second round. Uh, and many boards do it in different ways. And so it's going to be up to you once you uh, reflect and internalize what you think you saw and experience with that first round. 
you might determine that you're going to bring X amount back for a second conversation. Um, if that first round was virtual and you decide the second round is going to be face to face, then those are decisions that you have to make. Um, during that second round, you were you are now narrowing down to determine X number of folk that you might bring back. Once you do that, you're getting into uh, scheduling that second round, which is that second second bullet that's there, where it speaks to the association assisting you uh, with scheduling your second interviews for your final candidates. Um, once you do so, typically boards are ready now to have a deeper conversation and consideration for who your finalists might be. And here's where the legal pieces that I alluded to earlier come into play in terms of uh, our process and being approved by what's required legally. Once you have um, your second round completed and you enter into deliberations and executive session, you might be ready to move forward with the announcement of finalists. Once you make that decision, there are some legal uh, items that you must consider. Um, you are able to announce up to three finalists. That's the choice of your board as a whole. You can announce one finalist, you can announce two finalists, or you can announce a you can announce a total of three, but you cannot go beyond that number. Uh, again, that's the prerogative of the board in terms of announcing those finalists. So once you're ready to do so, you notice the reference to the law that's here on the screen. Um, we will ensure that those candidates still maintain interest in that position and get clearance from them to be announced as a finalist, two finalists or three finalists, whatever the case you might be. And, and once we get clearance, then you are ready to do a public meeting to announce your finalists. Now you are doing this outside of executive session. You will be scheduling a meeting and at that meeting, you will announce your finalists. Um, once you announce your finalists, there is a requirement and an expectation that um, redacted appropriate information is made available to your public and to the media. Uh, GSBA will provide those redacted packets for you. You can imagine that with having multiple candidates, each one of those packets are probably going to be in excess of 20 to 30 pages on each candidate. So you're going, you will have extensive information as far as their transcripts, their licensure, how they answer the questions in the application, um, all of the above. And some of that information will be information that is not to go forward to the public because it's uh, personally identifying information. But you don't have to be concerned about that because the association, based on the individuals that you um, decide you want to announce as finalists, the association will prepare the redacted packets for you and provide them to you. So during that public meeting, that you conduct and you announce your finalists. Once you announce your finalists and your board approves it in a public meeting, then you make available to your public and to your media those redacted packets on those candidates. At that point, um, the 14-day clock begins to tick by law. Uh, so after you make your announcement, you must wait um, 14 days before you can move forward and do a um, public meeting to announce your final choice, to announce your uh, permanent choice, I should say. So after the 14th day, you can schedule a meeting as a board, public meeting, to come forward to announce your permanent choice. But again, once you announce your finalists, you have a 14-day waiting period requirement. After that 14th day, you can schedule your meeting to announce your permanent choice. Um, and these are some of the moving pieces and parts that come into play with this in terms of, of, of why you have to dot I's and cross T's as you do this work. Again, I will also reiterate the importance of confidentiality and the importance of, of, of that as you uh, consider the candidates that you are interviewing uh, for many reasons, because many times those candidates are providing very, very uh, uh, sensitive information or license insurer information, transcripts, all the things I just mentioned. And those things are things that are to be kept confidential until it's time for the announcement of the finalists and you receive the redacted package so that that can be done. Uh, up until that point, all of that information is to be kept um, confidential and done in executive session. So I move on to the next piece. 
pretty quickly. Um, I'll move on to the next because we talked about this. I uh, mentioned that in terms of individualizing this, the process so that um, it meets your needs. The, the item that I want to pinpoint now, and I'm going to move through it pretty swiftly because I'm, I'm sure you have questions and comments, but I want to talk about what those indicators are that will govern your questionnaire, your survey that you're going to do. And we also provide a community survey that you can utilize to get input and feedback from your community about what they think you should be considering as far as your next CEO as well. We provide those for you um, and you can move forward and get input and feedback from your community. And once, once that happens, we will uh, do the analysis of that and, get, and, and hand it back to you. And you can report that and report it out to see here's what the community said around these particular items in terms of what it feels that the board should be looking for in a superintendent. So you do have the ability to do that. You have the ability to reach out to your community and get input and feedback as well. Um, that's optional. Many times boards decide to take um, take advantage of that and other times boards do not. So that will be uh, up to you in terms of if you decide to move forward. I'll move to the next slide because I wanna pinpoint what those indicators are. Uh, let's move past the timeline. All right, so there are nine indicators. Remember the research that I mentioned about ISLIC standards and PSAIL standards as well, but it's whittled down in nine when you merge that research. Um, so I move on to the next piece. The first two indicators speak to really those things that you have to do, like preparation and licensure, um, because Georgia Professional Standards Commission has a minimal requirement uh, for what any superintendent must bring forward to be able to function in those shoes in the state of Georgia and lead a, a public school district. So uh, it goes without saying that those first two indicators must speak to those items. So I'll move on and tell you a little bit more about what those two are next. They are educate the first one, education, training, and licensure. So you will receive um, answers to questions that each candidate will have provided to you around um, ensuring that their transcripts as it relates to education, training and licensure, that that's there. Um, the minimal requirement for licensure that should be provided and all of those uh, documents that should come with it will be there for um, indicator one and indicator two. Indicator two around experience. I will give you an example of what that is really about. It's uh, sitting on securing for you, what has this candidate done to prepare himself or herself to be ready to lead a, a major public school division or public school district. Um, what kind of uh, professional development has a person uh, stepped out and secured in reference to the superintendency outside of the uh, baseline requirements, whether that's a national training opportunity that they've taken advantage of or whether that's uh, through the local training opportunities through Georgia School Superintendents Association or, or nationally AASA or any of the other entities that are out there. So that indicator number two is designed to paint a picture for you on the candidates in terms of what they're bringing forward in reference to, ex to their experience. And remember, you will have answered a questionnaire before the announcement is built to determine the profile and what you're looking for in indicator one and indicator two, of course, within the parameters of the law. So I move forward with the remainder. The last seven indicators are ones that really speak, speak, speak specifically to um, the research. And I'll move on to the next slide to go quickly through those. And remember, these are those um, merging of PCL standards and ISLIC standards that speak to um, what the research says about uh, educational leadership and leading public school divisions or public school districts. Uh, so indicator three will be around vision, mission, and belief. Embed, embedded in vision, mission, and belief, you're going to be looking for answers in that application packet because the candidates will have answered extensive questions in their packets. And you'll see answers that relate to the experience that the candidate has had with visioning, also with um, securing uh, the mission or moving a mission forward for a school district and what those beliefs are. So you'll see that information in the, in, in the packets for each individual candidate. Indicator four, leading learning. What has this candidate um, secured in terms of teaching and learning, in terms of uh, being able to uh, 
um, eliminate achievement gaps in terms of the items that come into play in the research around a cultural competency, cultural proficiency, equity, all of those things that come into play that relate to staff and that relate to internal audience and external audience. Um, so, and that's about improving student achievement, of course, at the elementary level, early learning level, elementary level, middle and high school. So um, you will have information on each candidate in terms of that. Indicator five relates to those operational kinds of things, whether it's uh, transportation, whether it's food services, whether it's HR, human resources, or any of the above, what has been the experience for this particular candidate and what are you looking for as far as experience for that? And that's indicator five. So I'll move on to indicator six now. Uh, uh, really self-explanatory in terms of uh, that external audience and internal audience of stakeholders. Uh, this one is about what kind of experience has the candidate had with communicating widely and across various audiences, um, whether it relates to how they communicate with you as board members, whether it relates to how they communicate with certified staff or classified staff, also communicating with parents and students, teachers, the principals, all of the above. Um, getting input from stakeholders, multiple stakeholders. You already have a philosophy around your beliefs um, related to indicator six. And remember, when you look at these documents on each candidate, they will have answered a question on indicator six that will help you understand what they are bringing to the table in terms of what you're looking for. So there will be a method in the madness with that. And that takes us to indicator seven um, with ethical principles and professionalism. Um, there are certain ethical standards that govern the work for the superintendency and you have a, a domain that speaks to ethics. And so clearly you want to know that the uh, candidate knows and understands that particular domain and it'll, you, you'll be able to drill down deeper with that. Indicator eight, the education system. This is about how the candidate has um, secured professional learning around doing the research at the national level um, what's the national research around being able to move to close the gaps or being able to uh, accelerate learning for all children or being able to uh, provide safety nets? Um, how much reading and research has the candidate done in reference to that? Um, you've had a lot of conversation around where you feel like you're going to go in your strategic plan as it relates to equity for all students in terms of going to the next level. Um, this allows you to, to, to ascertain what the candidate knows about this in reference to experiences with the education system. So that's indicator eight. Moving on. The last one, personal qualities. You see a laundry list of items here that will come into play with each candidate. And each candidate will provide information that relates to each one of these. I won't read these to you, but when you do your profile analysis to build the announcement, you will answer questions about what you're looking for in personal qualities, and you will rank these personal qualities, and the top six will be the ones that go forward in the announcement. All of these will be addressed, but when your announcement goes forward as a draft and comes back to you, you'll see which ones reflect the top six in terms of what your board says is looking for as far as personal qualities and attributes. You see that it, it runs the gamut from conflict management to future perspective, to your organizational ability, time management, responsiveness, uh, sensitivity, sense of humor, fit for the leadership in the targeted district. All of those things uh, will come into play here. So I will move on from there. So those that really reflects all of those indicators and I move on. This is just a, a capsule of all of that. I mentioned ISLIC and PCL standards. Um, that's a, what you see on the screen now is a more direct display of PCL standards and there are 10 of those and they are merged in your process. I'll move forward from there. Won't read each of those. Let's keep moving. We'll move on. And here's where we'll, we will bring closure and I'll pause and uh, get some comments and feedback from you. I will say here that I have provided for you a brochure that is a pretty deep dive in terms of a recap of this. And it's a superintendent search brochure, a program of technical assistance to local boards of education and it's produced by Georgia School Boards Association. Um, you should have that in your inbox tonight once I finish. Um, your support staff there has it and they're gonna email that to you electronically. So I don't want you to think that all this stuff that I've, gone, that I've gone through with you 
so far. It's something that you you are expected to be to have to commit to memory uh, because that brochure will give you another deep display of the, of these things that I mentioned to you, uh, and will give you an opportunity to review also and determine what your questions might be. But I think that um, in closing, in terms of the, the the efforts that we embark upon with you, is that we support you and your mission and vision in reference to where you feel your organization is. And everything is built based on your responses, your profile. Um, you are in the driver's seat as far as um, all of that. Once we receive it, we do the heavy lifting for you uh, as far as making the contact with the candidates, doing the uh, analysis of your profile responses to the application packets, communicating with those um, candidates, uh, ensuring that that's confidential, and then handing it over to you so that you can make your decisions and make informed decisions about who you decide to interview. And then you move forward from there. And that's nothing that's not dictated to you. That's uh, within your control and your decision making. Uh, I know I've said quite a bit thus far, so I'll pause here and uh, give you an opportunity to uh, consider other questions or thoughts. Board members, if you can kind of slip your hand up if you have a question and then unmute yourself. All right, Ms. Sue, we'll let you go first. Good afternoon, Dr. King. I, number one, it's good to see you. And secondly, I, we really, I, I certainly really appreciate you uh, presenting to us tonight with uh, the work that we have before us. You mentioned a community survey. Are there surveys available for our teachers? Are there surveys available for our support staff, such as custodians, nutrition, bus? Um, with is, to yes, that the survey is a survey for all of your stakeholders. Okay. All right, very yes. good. Yes, and we right. urge you. And once, if you, if if your board takes advantage of that, then we will give you different um, suggestions, or ideas, or things that you can think about. For example, uh, posting it on your website mm -hmm. um, as a district. And for example, each school um, has it on a link on its website. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you have advisory councils, superintendents advisories that made up of uh, business leaders, the community, et cetera. If you do, then you provide a link for them as well. So we urge you to um, put it out there for a very wide audience to get input and feedback on their thinking okay. around okay. those things. So yes, all right. it touches all of us. Thank you, sir. Mr. Holmes, I see your hand. You have to unmute. You have to unmute. Yeah, I had raised my hand electronically, so I didn't know what you meant <laughs> that way. Uh, good evening, uh, Dr. Samuel T. King. How you doing today, brother? I'm just fine, just fine. I hope you are as well. Doing well. I got a couple of questions that I, I would like to get clarification on. Sure. Um, I know in the uh, investigation of these candidates, they're going to be background checks done. Is that going to be done by GSBA? Or are they going to uh, be allowed to bring in recent background check? And will it be done by NCIC? All right. Um, great question. The initial portion of the check consists of reference checks, social media checks, even a deeper dive with other references that go beyond what the candidate provides in the packet as well. Those are the things that GSBA handles and, and uh, will give you information and updates on. And you'll see that in every confidential packet on each individual candidate. So yes, that's done. In addition, we partner with your, your uh, district and your HR department at the right time to do the uh, criminal background check. So we would work through your board and your HR designee um, to do those checks. However, that typically happens once you arrive at the consideration of your finalists. Once you arrive at those and before you make a final decision on who you want to come forward and announce publicly, then typically that uh, check is done and provided for you. And it's of course confidential and provided for the board. So that piece, as far as the criminal background check, we work collaboratively with you and your HR department uh, designee, confidential designee for that purpose. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, on the, on the uh, questions that you say you're going to uh, complete, uh, and, and I just want to get clarification. You, you, you say you're 
make up the question from the profile from from what the board feels that like. these are not general questions that you already have uh you know set up but you will make them specifically from the from the uh profile questions uh that we answer in the surveys correct absolutely yes okay. yes remember those um those indicators uh, that you that you saw on the screen each right. one of those there will be a bank of questions based on your responses that you will receive uh, for each one of those indicators. So okay. it jump starts you in being able to take a look at uh, sampling questions that are designed to get at what, you, what it is that you're looking for. However, that's simply a guide. You can modify those questions uh, in any way that you want, and you can add additional ones or different ones, as long as you stay focused on those indicators, because that's what really allows you as a board to uh, whittle down to those pieces in the research that are designed to tell you uh, what a candidate is bringing to, table, bringing to the table across those indicators. So you have a bank of questions on each one of those customized for you and you uh, make decisions from there. Yes. Okay, Matt, uh, on uh, indicator five, um, and I know that covers management, but I'm, I'm, I'm more, I'm more, uh, I guess, concerned about whether or not the candidates or will GSBA do a battery of questions to determine uh, candidates' man management style, uh, or, or can you go back and actually uh, assess where they worked at, uh, talk with coworkers or anything like that? I'm just trying to see how would GSBA uh, – look at determining the management style uh of the of the candidate especially if they are uh you know uh finalists right that's that's what's uh really important to me right now sure sure well to get to to really get pinpoint that it's done in several ways you'll see clear examples from each reference each confidential reference that's provided to you because those references are designed to address each of the indicators that we are mentioning and you were mentioning organizational management which is number five so right. you will have you will have information from each of those references about their thoughts um, in terms of this candidate with that work in addition to that um the hr component of, of gsba does a deeper dive beyond the candidate beyond the references that are provided in the packet and you get a compilation of that as well. So it gives you uh, a multifaceted layout of each candidate in terms of being able to make some decisions. And also a part of that I feel, um, uh, Mr. Holmes, that will, will assist with that is really that last indicator too on those qualities mm -hmm. where you have a, a range of items that are there. Right. Um, you'll have, you have real-time responses and answers that every candidate will have given you about those items. But remember, when I mentioned 20 to 30 pages on each candidate, that's really what you're gonna receive. And it's a deep dive for the work that you have to do to take a look at that. Now we help you by providing the, the tiering, but that's, that's just to give you information based on what it seems to present a reference to the profile. So once that happens, um, and you've got 20 to 30 pages on those candidates, then it gives you an opportunity to compare responses because those documents should be used to determine if that candidate now has earned an opportunity to talk to, talk to you face to face, virtually or um, on site. So we always remind boards that while it takes a huge amount of time and preparation for candidates to, to, to um, develop complete packets for you, uh, those packets that you pour over or really a paper screening. It really indicates a, a paper screening for you to determine whether you see some things that are that are uh, intriguing enough to say, yeah, I would like to have, yes, I would like to have a deeper conversation with this candidate. We're not making the decision just based on the 20 to 30 uh, pages in the application packet about whether we want to hire this candidate or not, but this gives us more than enough information to determine if we want to bring them to the table for a deeper conversation about what we're looking for. So yes, I feel like you have, uh, extensive information on each candidate for that. And you always have an opportunity as you meet 
uh, and look at um, individual candidates if other questions surface that, at, but at, that as a board you decide that you want to take a look at, as long as you're, you're providing some equity across that question. In other words, if you're asking that question for one candidate, then you need to be able to ask that same information from another candidate. And once that happens, and you ask um, the association to, to try to get that for you, if you don't think you have it, then the association works to provide that kind of information for you as well. Okay, thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, All right. Mr. Will you finish, Mr. Hunt? Okay, Mr. Brown, you raised your hand. I did, trying to, can you hear me, Dr. King? I can, yes, sir. Thank you so much. Wanted to ask this question here. So we know that you guys have been doing the superintendent search for quite some time now. Is there any way that boards are able to tailor it which, to where they feel like it's best for them? So are we able to add like performance tests? I know a lot of times that, you know, principals and, you know, different things have to do performance tests. Are we able to embed some performance tests where we're able to uh, monitor or watch and see how the superintendents are interacting with uh, current staff? Well, actually, it's from a performance staff standpoint, uh, we always urge you to do that as you enter into that first and second round of interviews. Uh, many times across those indicators, boards decide when they look at those questions. Um, for example, if they want um, certain questions and items to surface in a performance task, uh, it could be that if you are virtual, you are asking a candidate to provide um, information on what your first, what what their 90 day entry will look like and how they will interface with the, with the stakeholders around that. Well, and sometimes that really reflects what that second round um, discussion looks like. I'm just offering that as an example, not in any way to say that that's what you're going to do. But uh, Mr. Brown, as far as giving you examples of that, those are things that you can, that you can consider. Uh, so the answer is yes. As long as your board is all on the same page around what it is that you want to go after during that second round. We urge you, though, to consider those kinds of things as you are preparing to go to the second round, uh, because that first round is really when you're looking at that 30,000 foot view of all those items that we were talking about. And that gives you a better idea of whether the person was going to um, come back and be able to drill down to some of those things. So, so yes, absolutely. Uh, you'll have enough information in those um, banks to convert questions into a, a real-time uh, tangible activity that uh, your candidates can do or provide for you virtually in the second round or face-to-face -face in the second round as well. Okay. And then also, so when I'm thinking about this, um, I've served, served on the committee to hire a superintendent while I was teaching. And so how will, and I guess it's up to the board for us to discuss more, but what advice or how will we be able to, I guess, divide the different groups or different task force, um, either through the questionnaire or survey that they take, how we'll be able to divide them to where we have a, a good representation of scholars, a good representation of parents, and a good representation of teachers um, and administrators that will be at the table. Okay. As far as the surveys, the, the initial survey to build the profile is the boards. Um, okay. So the, 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 that means you. That mm -hmm. questionnaire and that survey comes to you. That does not go to the public. However, the community survey that I mentioned does go to the public. We um, require that the board builds its first profile on, on what you're looking for across those indicators. And when you put your community survey out there, you're at the point now of, of taking a look at the input and the feedback that your community is giving you around um, those items as far as what you what they feel you ought to be looking for in a candidate and you are to consider all of that input and that feedback as you make decisions about your questions during your interview process as well so okay. we help you we, we, we help you with that and when we give you the analysis back from the community survey it gives you an idea about how many how many um, stakeholders were um, internal how many stakeholders were might, might have been external but remember these community surveys are designed for people to give you um, confidential feedback. So uh, the community survey is not designed for, for the individuals to be identified. However, it does give them an opportunity to, when they respond to the items, that they can um, answer questions in terms of whether they are uh, employees, whether they are 
outside stakeholder, that kind of thing. But we work very hard to ensure that they are very comfortable in giving you feedback and we give that analysis back to you. So throughout this process, when we, uh, so if we are able to, if the board wants to do it, are we able to have like a selection committee of uh, people that are represented from all levels of being a stakeholder, whether it's a teacher, scholar, parent, community, uh, business leaders? Right, that's a board discussion that you would enter into. And of course, we'd help facilitate that with you in terms of the discussion. But that would be something that, that as we begin the process, of course, when, when I mentioned about uh, looking at a three month process, uh, once you press go, you are posting that announcement and it goes forward instantly. And so we urge um, boards to try to work to ensure that you're putting it out there for a six week period of time, rule of thumb. Uh, no less than four. So four to six weeks that during that four to six weeks period, that gives you an opportunity to consider some of the things that you are mentioning, Mr. Brown. And so, and, and as your board considers those things that we will help facilitate a conversation with your board about that. But remember, you've got a about a six week period of time, four to six week period, whatever your timeline, it ends up reflecting where you're waiting for all of your candidates to complete those packets because we, we provide four to six weeks for, for obvious reasons. One, you'll be candidates need that time because it takes a lot of time to finish these packets and provide the information that you need. The other piece is that you want to leave your posting out there long enough to um, give a wide audience an opportunity to respond as well. So, so yes, it does give you some flexibility in terms of what, how you make decisions about what your next step is going to be as you determine who you're going to interview, what kind of conversations you're going to have, and who you decide you want to involve. And so uh, we will support you and work through that with you. Uh, but you know that's a, something that you would have to come together as a board to talk about. And we facilitate um, helping you and supporting you to decide how you want to move forward with that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Uh, Ms. Barbara Joe, did you have any questions? Mr. Chair, I don't have any questions. I just want to thank Dr. King for coming tonight and doing the presentation for us. Uh, I have been on the board for a while and have gone through superintendent search a couple of times, and we have used GSBA, I know, at least one of those times. And I'm very familiar with your process. I think it's very thorough, and I commend you for the process that you use. So uh, thank you again for coming tonight. My pleasure. All right. You answer one of my questions, Dr. King, as far as, you know, how long that window is open, that four to six weeks. Is there any more on a timeline that you were planning to share? Or can you share a little more about what that timeline, uh, like the surveys, you know, once we say go, how quickly do we need to begin making all of this happen and to be able to have that packet ready? And Okay. The first thing that your board would need to do would be able to would be to make a decision that you want um, GSBA to support you and in, in um, carrying out your superintendent search. Uh, once you make that decision, of course, Mr. Chairman, then you can notify GSBA, you can notify me. And once I receive that, we will immediately send you your questionnaire to begin the process to, to answer along those indicators to begin to build a profile. We'd ask that um, you take um five working days or less to do that sometimes you can do it much quicker um if you do then we can get the first draft of the announcement back to you quicker uh remember that it's your analysis that we're handing back to you that says here's what you've said and that analysis will give you uh, those indicators around required attributes preferred attributes all of those things because those are the kinds of questions that you will be answering and we will hand that draft back to you based on that at the same time we'd ask you to give us a designee from a, a many times it's your communication person or a designee from the board that will provide uh, the information i just that i mentioned earlier about number of students in the district updating that a number of employees um you know, certified staff classified staff so we use all of those things to build a profile a draft profile too uh, also, we'd ask for like various photos that represent your district, and we will also merge those items in your announcement and send that back to you to give you like a, a graphic display of what that would look like. 
Um, but to answer your question, as soon as you make a decision as a board that you want to move forward with GSBA and you notify us, we will immediately send you back that questionnaire and we will begin the process. Um, let's just say you take um, five working days or less to complete that process, we get it back to you. Once we get the draft back to you with the recur re preferred and required attributes and all the things we just mentioned, you've got to approve the draft. That means that your board is going to uh, pour over that draft, make tweaks, make changes. Once you approve that draft and get it back to us, then we're ready to begin to press go and build the application based on what you've said. Um, so that takes a bit of a time, but time. But as far as turnaround for you, your next step is to say to Georgia School Board Association that you've made your decision and that you're ready for us to begin the process, and we will immediately send the information out to you. We will also draft a uh, timeline based on when you press go. And we'll send back the timeline to you in draft form to, for you to take a look at. Uh, we'll ask you, are you looking at posting four weeks or six weeks? You'll make decisions on that and we'll send that draft back to you to so that you can take a look at when you should be able to finish this work because um, what, you remember that 14 day waiting period, you can't, you know, nothing we can do to change that. So that comes into play with that consideration of three months. Uh, and then after that 14 day waiting period, then you can announce your permanent choice. But you also have to take into consideration that there may be some requirements for, for folk to uh, make transitions, whether it's internal transition or whether it's external transition, you have to also account for that. Um, and that's why you're looking at a rule of thumb about a three month process. But uh, we'll work with you on that. Okay, uh, board members, any additional questions before from Dr. King? Just remember you do have a brochure and it should be in your inbox probably right about now. Um, that is really a, a review of what, what I've uh, provided for you. And if you have other questions, don't hesitate uh, to reach out and let us know. We'd be, be happy to, to support your work and we appreciate what you do each day. Okay. Thank you so very much. Okay. Um, I, board members, I have talked with you individually um, and after hearing all of the presentation today, uh, we do not have to make that decision this evening, but if everyone is thinking positively about moving forward with GSBA, we most certainly could get the ball rolling. So if someone is interested in making a, uh, a motion uh, to engage GSBA uh, with our national superintendent cert, I would uh, entertain that motion. So move. Does that have to be? Oh, no, uh... I'm sorry, Mr. Brown, if you had a question. I was just asking, did that have to be done today? Is there is there any further discussion that we can have on this? No, it does not have to be done tonight. That That, that is correct. Uh, I think the next available time we'll be able to do that would be next week uh, if we want to do that next our Tuesday meeting then. I would just that's why I'm saying if if you need if someone needs more discussion, we can we can definitely wait and do it at that, that point. Just, just for my information uh, from the board members, is there anything that uh, you wanted to discuss, uh, Mr. Brown? Uh, I just think for me, um, I mean, I'm okay with it. I just want to uh, go through the brochure, go through the information, and see if I have any other questions, and to see if you know, if you know, if you know, I, I'm sure that they can. Um, help us with the search, but I just want to go through everything and give us the opportunity and then even, you know, talk to some of you guys individually uh, before making a decision. Okay. Uh, you, you are aware that there are not many options that we have and uh, the local RISA has already declined to even participate. Right. I'm aware of that, but I do know that GSBA does superintendent searches and there are other firms that do superintendent searches and so i just want to you know go through the brochure and then just make some questions i'm not ready to just vote on it tonight okay all right yeah. uh, miss barbara joe you had started to ask something earlier were you did you still have a question no i'm fine i was just about to make a motion that we move forward with gsba uh but i will certainly respect mr brown's decision to consider it before we make a motion Okay. Um, 
Looking at our agenda, we're at uh, board member comments, and I'm going to just going to go across my screen, uh, and I'm also I'm going to start with Miss Sue. Did you have anything, any comments that you need for this evening? All right, and then Miss Barbara Joe. I'm good, Mr. Chair. Okay, Mr. Brown. Yes, I do want to say that um, we are going to make this process is going to be transparent. We are going to ask for input from the general public. So if the general public, um, I have started a Padlet on my school board member page where you can find all the documents. I uploaded the agenda, uploaded uh, Dr. King's presentation uh, mm -hmm. here tonight is located on the Padlet. So you can go look at all the documents there um, just so that you can stay updated on what's going on. Also have put a pallet out for the school for the budget as well. So um, if there are any questions or anything, you can go visit that page, visit the pallet, leave your comments so that we can be transparent in what we're doing. And just thank GSBA for their time tonight. Dr. King, it's always a pleasure to see you. And I look forward to talking with you again. Okay, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I, I um I would and Mr. Brown kind of touched on what I was suggesting that we would do is uh put this out on our school website to try to get people uh a running start uh i don't know if anyone can uh i guess uh the young miss miss barb berber whatever name is uh can can handle that feat for us but we need to get this out if we're gonna adequately have constituent staff and all of our all of our stakeholders involvement we need to go ahead and get get it out that that we're going to be seeking input from them and uh and i also like to thank uh dr king for uh doing the presentation uh you you know we've done superintendent search i don't think at this level that's why i was asking uh, mr brown the question uh, I think this is the most in-depth that we've done on a superintendent uh, search. So I appreciate what he brought to the table. It, it really gave me a sense of comfort to see some of the um, things in the presentation that you all will provide for us. So uh, I may, being, having have gone through this two other times, uh, I'm very comfortable with what you um you present it and uh so i just want to thank you for that all right thank you very much um we board members we do not have anything for executive session this evening because we will be going into executive session tomorrow at 3 30. so if no one else anything else about what is going on with gsba i would entertain a motion to adjourn mr chair i have a question okay i've got we'll start with miss sue and then we'll go to mr smith uh just want to clarify uh tomorrow 3 30 tomorrow is that correct that is correct at the learning center or mr smith is the learning that's, yes the that's learning correct center. okay all right and then executive session it follows that no executive session is at 3 30. okay and then our public meeting will be at 5 30. okay very good thank you mr smith all right, let me just clarify. We are having the um, the board meeting in the in the learning center tomorrow, so that we can have a larger space to get the social distancing. There will be um, limited seating for public, though only about fifteen seats or so can be gotten into that room because of the uh, social distancing requirements that we have. So um, we will be doing that tomorrow night and working on that again for next week's meeting too. How we can can make that work even better. I want to thank Dr. King for coming down tonight and appreciate uh, his input and uh, and the questions that y'all have asked have been very good. Um, this, this, as you said, it probably is the most important work that, that needs to be done and, and I commend that to you. So thank you, Dr. King, for being there. Uh, we'll be glad to put whatever on the website that you would like for us to put, whether it be the brochure, the PowerPoint, or whatever you would like for us to put out there uh, to begin building that um, that that public folder so they can begin to see what's going to be, be occurring. All right. Wonderful. Board members, I would entertain a motion then to adjourn. So move. I have a motion by Mr. Holmes and a second by Miss Sue. She raised her hand before you did, Sintel. Sorry about that. <laughs> or do you have a question? Is that a question? 
No, just that was just motioning okay. second. Looks like he's so all in favor signify by set, raising your right hand and we will be adjourned. Talk with y'all tomorrow. Okay, Thanks. take care. Okay.